irregular periods, weight gain, or unexplained breakouts. You may have signs uh, that something really serious is going on. Polycystic ovary syndrome is one of the most common hormonal abnormalities in women. So here to explain it and give us some information on what you can do about it, our women's health expert, Dr. Marjorie Dixon. Thank you for bringing the information when it comes to things like this. How many women actually might be um, suffering from this? It's between 5 to 10% of women, actually. Okay. So it's fairly prevalent. It's happening. It's yeah. out there. Yeah, and it's actually the number one reason why women don't get their periods, mm -hmm. apart from being pregnant. Right. Yeah. So okay. It's common. You're saying that the, the name is not, it, like, it might throw you off a little bit. It's yeah, a bit of a misnomer. It's called polycystic ovarian syndrome, and yes, it's associated with some cysts on the ovaries, but that's not the mainstay of the illness. The mainstay of the syndrome is the fact that it heralds itself with, you have to have two out of three. Okay. So irregular periods, so we call it oligo, infrequent, or amenorrhea, so missing your period. Yeah. Number two, it's what we call clinical, so symptoms of it or biochemical in your blood, okay. high levels of male circulating hormones, so hyperandrogenism. Mm -hmm. So that means that women can get actually hair on their chin, on their mm. upper lip, or mm -hmm. have manifestations that men have, so male pattern baldness, for example, mm. um, lowering of the voice, so signs of virilization. Yeah. But then you don't necessarily have to have those clinical symptoms, it can just be in your blood. So if you do a blood test and you see high levels of circulating male hormone in women, yeah. that can be one of them. And you would only do that if you knew you were missing your periods. You went to the, and you went to the doctor, and they're exactly. like, okay, you're not pregnant, so let us test your blood, and then you would see the... Exactly, as part of it, part of the workup, so you require an, an endocrine workup. Okay. So those were two, and then the third one is the polycystic ovaries, but when you say polycystic ovaries, patients often come in and say, do I need surgery, like, do you have to cut them off? Yeah. And it's absolutely not. There are physiologic cysts that sometimes require treatment gynecologically, mm -hmm. but this is the typical ultrasound appearance of polycystic ovaries. They're large volume, and they have, like, little peripheral cysts. Mm -hmm. It looks like a strand of pearls. In medicine, we always attribute something to something that people can visualize. Yeah. So it makes the ovaries... I have a picture of the ovary. It doesn't really give a good idea of the peripheral cysts, but you see how it's kind of bulky but looking But that, in the, in the magnifying glass yes. there, that is what it would look like. Yeah, a bulkier looking ovary. When you do surgery and you see a polycystic ovary, they look like a chunky monkey ovary. Like a, it okay. Has, and then when you do the ultrasound, you see those peripheral cysts. And what's happening, we've talked about the menstrual cycle before. There's a dysregulation in the communication. Every month we talk about our brain sending hormones to our ovaries to make us ovulate. Yeah. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, that communication is dysregulated. Okay. So the way that the regulation goes to the ovaries to ovulate, women don't end up ovulating. So you recruit a follicle, you get the follicle that grows with the egg, but it never gets released. Oh, I we see. We don't really understand why it happens. It might be genetic. It's a combination of genetic and environmental factors, mm -hmm. but it really manifests itself with missing your period. And the most important thing is to go to a physician who understands that the um, dysregulation of the endocrine system of all of the hormones cannot necessarily be polycystic. It might be something that's more insidious. So it might be something like an adrenal tumor that secretes male hormone. Okay. It might be uh, <laughs> that you're not getting your period because you have a, a brain tumor, something called hypothalamic amenorrhea. Mm. So you really have to see a collaborative team and a professional a physician that also understands endocrinology that can look at all of the interplays of these systems because yes. one of the mainstays is also insulin resistance. And when you're insulin resistant, it means that you're pancreas is secreting a lot, a lot of insulin to manage your blood sugar levels and not doing it well. So you're at risk of developing diabetes. Yeah. And we talk all the time in Celia about health and wellness and exercise and right food choices. Mm -hmm. That's critical in the potential treatment of this illness. Okay, so I want to talk about what, like, what happens if you have this. Do you call it PCOS or is it PCOS? Oh, what do you do? People say PCOS. Some PCOS. PCOS too. Yeah. If you have that, what, like, how bad can it get? So, is it is it just that, like, the male attributes that you have to worry about, or yeah. are there are there like some other concerns that right. you'll have so if you we, have it? So it's an endocrinopathy, an endocrine pathology that can also manifest itself in diabetes, and that okay. can be a big problem because women tend to easy weight gain and they get also depressed. So they're like, yeah. okay, so. My woman has been taken away from me. I have these male manifestations. Attributes. I'm gaining weight easily. And now I have prediabetes. 35% of these women by age 40 will have prediabetes or frank diabetes in 10%. And when do you get it? Is this, is this something young women get? It can happen just around the time of the teenage years. And it can oh. happen over the menstruating years. Sometimes women oh. will go through having regular, somewhat irregular periods. And in their mid-20s, yeah. all of a sudden, they quick weight gain. And then oh, okay. they notice the male hormones. And sometimes the doctor just says, let me put you on the pill because that can lower the male circulating hormones. Yeah. But mainly, you need to go to a doctor that can manage the endocrinopathy because 
it's not always PCOS, and there are some things that can be, sometimes you need metformin, an oral hypoglycemic agent that's given to diabetic patients to help people not develop the eventual exacerbations of diabetes. Okay. So that's one. I see patients with PCOS because they don't get their periods, they want to get pregnant. pregnant yeah. So I manage them in infertility, but I won't make everybody pregnant either because if you have a hormonal dysregulation that puts you at risk of diabetes and you get pregnant, your baby can have congenital defects. So people will come to me to get pregnant and say, sorry, I can't make you pregnant. I'm going to send you to my endocrinologist that works with me yeah. who's going to manage your sugar levels to put you in a safe place and then I can get you pregnant safely. And is there anything else you can do about this if you, so you, you, so you say you've got to deal with it um, with an endocrinologist. Yes. Is there anything else that you can be doing to, to manage this? Yes, yeah, so diet and exercise is a big one. Yeah. Um, managing your um, lifestyle can actually make your periods start regularly again. If you How? lose 10% of your body weight with polycystic okay. ovarian syndrome, your periods may resume their regular ovulation pattern. Oh. So that's why lifestyle management is so critical. Yeah. Endocrinologists working collaboratively and understanding it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Thank you so much, because that's a holistic view, and we yes. appreciate that.